Rudolf Ogu Okonkwo. After ten years as a teacher, a young Okija man decided to go and express his gratitude to the most important person who taught him in school. He traveled 47 kilometers to see his old teacher in Nobi, where the 80-year-old man had retired. When he got there that hot afternoon, he saw the man resting under a mango tree with a small local breed dog often called Bingo, keeping him company. Around him was a modest bungalow with rows and rows of hibiscus and white gardenia planted around it. Some of the glass window louvers were broken and replaced with pieces of wood. The scent of blooming cashew tree filled the air. Sir, you taught me in class four, do you remember me? The young man said after introducing himself. He wore khaki trousers with a white shirt, an old school uniform his old teacher could quickly identify. With his failing eyesight, the old man did not recall the young man's face or name. After thirty years of teaching over four thousand students across the old eastern Nigeria, most men at his age would not remember unless for exceptional cases. The young man was not surprised, considering it was over twenty years ago since he was in the old man's class. He, however, thought his case was exceptional. What do you do now? the old man asked him, shifting the wrapper around his waist to fully cover his arthritis riddled knees. I am a teacher, the young man answered, his eyes beamed as he said so. That's nice, the old man said. Teaching is a very noble profession. Even if everyone forgets about you when you are old and retired, you forever retain some of the beautiful memories of your time as a teacher. Even if your material reward were meager, you would cherish the knowledge that some of those you taught are the ones running the affairs of your country. In the rare case, when your former student traveled far to come and see you, that is the ultimate. It is always delightful to encounter one of your former students and they remember you. Nothing beats that. Especially when they have a good memory of you, it beats being a police officer or a soldier, which were the other career options available to us then. The young man smiled. You inspired me to be a teacher, he said. How? The old man asked, brushing off a mosquito that landed on his wrinkled arm. He could have crushed the mosquito without looking based on his sharp reflex, but he did not. Then, the young man told him the story of the day he changed his life. I was in class 4, the young man started. On that day, a friend of mine came to class with a beautiful watch his father bought for him in Onitsha. All of us in class admired it. Being that my father was poor and could never afford to buy me a watch like that, when I had an opportunity, I stole the watch. He paused and glanced at the old man's face. It was expressionless. No judgment had formed, not on his eyelids and not on his bushy brows. My friend whose watch I stole tried to get the person who stole his watch to return it but failed, the young man continued. So he reported to you. You came into class and asked the person who stole the watch to bring it forward, but nobody moved. There was silence. I was afraid, not just afraid to return the watch, I did not dare to return the watch. At that point, I knew that I needed more courage to return the watch than the courage that I used to steal it. The small dog barked, wagged its tail and shifted away from the young man. Looking up, the young man saw the old man's jaw moving as if he was chewing bitter cola nut. Then you closed our classroom door and asked all of us to close our eyes, the young man continued. You went around searching each person's pocket. I had never been terrified as I was at that moment. I thought of bringing the watch out and dropping it on the floor, far away from me. But I dismissed it because though you asked us to close our eyes, I imagined everyone in the class was looking at me. I froze in grave horror. When you came to my pocket, you found the watch. You took it. But you did not stop your search. You continued to search until you got to the last boy in class. You then went to the front of the class and asked us to open our eyes. When we did, you announced that you had found the watch. At this juncture, the old man gestured to the young man to sit on a green plastic chair beside him. 
The young man thanked him. When he had sat down, he continued with his story. You did not say whose pocket you found the watch. You did not say anything to me in public or in private. You gave the watch back to my friend, the owner. That day, you changed my life forever. I went from facing the most shameful situation ever to having my dignity restored in 60 seconds. From that day on, I resolved to be a good person for life. You did not scold me. You did not quote the Bible or the Quran. You did not take me to a shrine. You did not read out passages from the Bhagavad Gita. You did not spell out any moral lessons from Mahatma Gandhi, Abraham Lincoln, Namdi Azikai, Nelson Mandela, or Benjamin Franklin. You did not advise me to change my ways. Still, I got the message. After telling this story, the young man asked the old teacher, Sir, do you remember this incident? The old man smiled and said yes. I remember the incident, but I do not remember you. Why? The young man asked, surprised. Because, I, too, closed my eyes while searching the pockets of all of you, the old man said. I did not open it even when I took the watch from your pocket. I continued. The old man dipped his hands into the pocket of a worn-out ISI Agu top he had on, brought out a pot of alligator pepper, two bitter cola nuts and an edible mzukle and offered them to the young man. Welcome to my modest home, the old man said. The young man cheerfully accepted them with a gleeful reminder of Breen Brown's assertion that while vulnerability is the core of shame and fear and our struggle for worthiness, it is also the birthplace of joy, creativity, belonging and love. A great teacher knows that he doesn't have to humiliate in order to correct. A great athlete knows that he doesn't have to receive a medal in order to be a winner. A great believer knows that he doesn't have to fight for his God to demonstrate the affirmation of the creed. If you must humiliate anyone for you to correct, then you do not know how to teach. If you must get a medal to feel like a winner, you don't know that participation is everything. If you must kill anyone for you to save your God from humiliation, then you don't know the God you worship. This is a new version of an old Indian epic story. Rudolf Ogu Okonkwo teaches post-colonial African history at the School of Visual Arts in New York City. He is also the host of Dr. Damage's show. His books include This American Life SEF, Children of a Retired God, among others. Playing lotteries on the Mega Millions Ninja platform is fun and exciting. Get started by following these simple steps. Visit www.megamillionsninja.com. Click register at the top of the home page. You can sign up to Mega Millions Ninja. Once your account is confirmed, log in and select the lottery or draw to play. Once you're done selecting numbers, click proceed to check out page. Finally, review your order, choose a payment method and <coughs> click pay now. You will receive an order confirmation via email. Mega Millions Ninja. Play it, win it. All right, all right, all right. Welcome to another episode of Have Your Say 247. This is an opportunity for you to join me so that we can talk about what's going on in the political scene and the cultural scene of Nigeria and Africa. Today, we are dealing with interesting topics, you know, because we are in the month of May and this will determine what will happen in Nigeria. What will happen in this month will determine what will happen in Nigeria in the next, in the next four years. So, so this is very critical, this period in time in Nigeria. Of course, of course, we know what's going on in the political arena. We know that we have almost 21. I've lost count how many people are running for president under one political party. And these are people who are bringing out 100 million, 100 million each to run for president. You have pastors, you have politicians, you have even 
central bank governor is thinking about running for president. Very, very interesting. And then yesterday, there was a very important meeting that happened in Lagos. Let's take a look at clip from that meeting. Yes, yes, that's a little bit from, from the meeting that happened in Lagos yesterday. We are also going to show you a clip that will give you what an idea of what's going on at the other end of the spectrum. That is uh, sacrificing. People will come and say, "Look, I want." When I hear people declaring for APC, saying that they want to continue the good job of Mr. President, the good job of people dying every day, the good job of Naira falling every day, I feel so ashamed. That we have gone to the level where sacrificing people will come and say, Look, I want to continue the good job of Buhari. What is the good job of Buhari? Of hunger is a good job, of poverty is a good job, of insecurity is a good job, of the economy falling is a good job. It's such a shameful thing. I, I can't believe that somebody will come out in today's Nigeria and say, I want to continue where Mr. Buhari has stopped. May God forgive. May God never allow that people to continue to. Also, um, we know that why this is going on. Uh, public uh, universities in Nigeria are still closed and students are home. And um, the Minister for Education is also running for president. So take a look at what one student, the reaction of a student to all this. Shame on you, President Robert Duwari. Shame on you, the Minister of Education. I heard you just acquired your presidential nomination for 500 million. Shame on all of you. Your children are graduating from private universities and abroad. Why Nigerian students have been at some of the past 30 days? Don't be your children from first generation to third generation. Amen. Shame on all of you. We will continue to protest and embarrass you people nationally till you fucking leave those offices. Hoodlums. Grace people. All right. Let's uh, begin our conversation. Let's bring in some of our viewers who are already in the studio. If you want to join us and you want to contribute, please um, turn on your camera so that we know that you want to contribute. If you don't want to contribute, you can join us on YouTube. Uh, Dr. Damages, so you can join us on Facebook or Twitter and, and watch from there. All right. Uh, our regular, our friend, uh, John Abba is here already. John Abba, welcome to the show. Thank you, Dr. Damages. All right. So um, how is Dallas? Uh, Dallas is good. We're expecting you to visit. <laughs> yeah yeah we have plans to be to travel this summer so we'll talk about that um but know. let's let's get to the the stories of the of the week i can't show you the pictures um but there was a picture that is all over social media of uh, apc candidates from the southwest they met in uh, lagos yesterday and uh, people have compared that picture to, to the the last supper um Really, the fact I don't have the technology to show you is, is frustrating. So you you see the candidates um, sitting with leaders of um, of the Southwest. They met and they wanted to make sure that um, that they don't fight each other. That they all agree that power should move to the Southwest. Uh, let me start with asking you, um, what is your take on um, the dynamics? How things are changing in the political arena today? Uh, most definitely, they are not where they used to be in terms of the political uh, structure in Nigeria, but they are still not where they're supposed to be. Little or no progress has made, but um, uh, so far, the APC and the PDP, uh, they are uh, career politicians, and that's what politician does, is to demonize the others. Uh, the day you win an election, 
you should know that that is the day you have uh, created an enemy that we uh, punch you or do everything to make sure you don't win the next election. Uh, APC um, uh, came to power as a result of Nigerian, Nigerians believe that the uh, PDP failed them. And I think it's, uh, it's about uh, uh, this person, uh, they are all devil, but there's a better devil. So we we'll see what happened, but there is no difference in uh, and now there is a money giving out uh, Tinubu traveling to the north to give them money. Uh, other uh, uh, other are all going to the north to give them money. Uh, money that uh, where did they acquire those money from? That is the question. Uh, are there business people before they join politics? Where did the pastor that the pastor politician where did they get the money from? It still tell the low morale of our society. Now, um, your friend, um, uh, Pastor Tunde Bakare, uh, also picked up a form. He's running for president under APC. He was uh, one time a uh, um, vice presidential candidate under uh, Buhari when Buhari tried and failed. Uh, now he said uh, that God told him that he will be the next president after, after Buhari. Uh, what do you think about a pastor um, going into politics full time, picking up form to be elected and uh, voted for? What What is your take on that? A uh, pastor to be join a uh, 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 he's always a politician, but the, uh, he, and uh, like you said, uh, he he was a candidate under um, uh, Buhari, I think, in the past, uh, run as a running mate of Buhari. And uh, so he has always been a politician. Um, the only thing, the language I see there that uh, we're all going to see is that when you say God is saved, and the Bible says that who is that that said and it come to pass if the Lord do not command it. So that is the Bible. Yeah, so we, what can see, um, uh, Tunde Bakari has some uh, followers, uh, but he's a flip-flopper. Flip Flopper, what do you mean by that? Uh, uh, the, I, I watched a video while when he said in his, uh, uh, in his uh, um, church, uh, uh, making a strong comment about the president and uh, later he, 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 he said something contrary to what he said before. So when you are not consistent, then you are a flop flipper. If you uh, if you flip flop or whatever, so when you said, "Oh, uh, Mr. President, is this, is this, is this, is this," and then the next day you say you didn't see it when you are caught on camera, uh, I don't understand why people are not sensitive that um, when you say it and it's on social media, you can't take it back. All right, let's let's watch a little bit of what happened yesterday too, and then we'll be right back. All right. Okay, sorry, the studio is full. I have to get um, people out. Um, if any reason you don't want to um, contribute, you want to watch, please um, join us on um, join us on uh, on Facebook on YouTube. It's a better place to stay and watch. All right. Meanwhile, um, we we the the big story is that um the central bank governor is also um considering running for president so let's let me show you a video of a militant group somewhere in nigeria throwing their support for the central bank governor which is interesting cycling politicians in the system politicians are like me which is the only standing fight force in the region wish to make the following points clear one firstly 
we must state clearly that we are not a force against the federal government or we are not a separatist movement. We are agitating for better life and inclusion from government. We have made up our mind to join the political process and we are tired of the recycling politicians in the system. Politicians are like men trying to shave women, promising everything on earth just to get her and doing nothing at all as promised. We are tired of these games. The names flying around and carefully shaking their background we have settled for the Governor of Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Ifai Mefele. If he is truly contesting and the rumors are true, although we don't know him, that he looks like a gentleman who will keep to his words, and most importantly, he is not a politician. We took this decision because he has used his office to create programs to eradicate poverty and so many programs also in agriculture. We believe that if he is given the opportunity it will bring meaningful development and help the economy get back on its feet. We are willing to surrender our hands as solidarity on confirmation of MFLA as the presidential flag bearer of the All Progressive Congress APC. We will in turn protect pipelines and contribute in stopping kidnapping and illegal bunkering in the region. Finally, we appeal to those with the title of party delegates for the forthcoming presidential primaries. When you get to Abuja, as you are receiving your dollars, check your conscience and vote for Godwin Ifai Emefele, who we strongly believe can solve the problem of this country and the Niger Delta, most importantly in the Niger Delta region. Thank you, General Jack Feinborn, for the Niger Delta Freedom Reserve Force. <laughs> oh, Niger Delta Freedom Reserve Force. Uh, Ovia, welcome to the show. Thank you. For the fact, uh, that, for the fact that I asked to look his script to pronounce the name. You, know. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think that's his real name? <laughs> <laughs> ah, Bolaji, welcome to the show. Oh, now, now, mm -hmm. Yeah, every, everybody, you know. We need to uh, go in diaspora In diaspora group, you know, and cover your <laughs> face and read the speech for us. Uh, that, Don, uh, welcome to the show. We'll buy phone for Bolaji. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to find somebody to buy the phone for. Don, can you unmute yourself and tell us uh, where I know Bolaji is joining us from, uh, hold on, hold on, let me remember. I'm getting old. Uh, Bolaji is joining us from, okay, California. Yes. Uh, Ovi, I don't, I never know where you are every <laughs> week. So where are you, Ovi? I'm in Atlanta now. Okay, good. Uh, don't, don't unmute yourself and tell us uh, where you're joining us from. Ready? Uh, is it me? Yeah, yeah, that's you. Is it Don or Dan? I can't see from Dan. It's sorry, Dan. Dan. Dan, okay, Dan, tell us where you're from. Come, joining us from. Okay, uh, okay, I'm calling from uh, uh, Canada. Canada, okay, good. Very good. Thank you. Thank you guys for joining us. Um, we are in a very critical period in Nigeria. Um, most people don't understand what's going on, but um, they just hear that 100 million is being dropped by different people. <laughs> but but um, in the next one, four weeks, I think, in four weeks' time, we, we know who will be the next uh, president of Nigeria. Um, and we won't have any votes. Most of us will not vote. We don't have, have no votes. Uh, but that's, that's how it is. And um, we can only talk. So that's why we have this show where you can tell us your views. We have a voting capacity. We have the weight. We have the, uh, the how do I put it? We have the little influence to influence people to vote the way. That's exactly. That's, we hope that we can reach to uh, delegate yeah. who are the people that we determine who, who actually... Um, if they are vote, if they are vote, I, I have a footage card. Oh no, but you are not voting for the primaries. <laughs> I'm not voting in the primaries. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> footage card cannot help you here, and and whoever comes out is the one that that we eventually vote for. You know. Anyway, so let's start from um, the premise. We think about the, there are three things going on. Okay, there is the push, a new push, especially in the APC where uh, we thought that they zoned, whether they said it or not, that they zoned the presidency to the South, 
but it appears as if that is not happening. There are not any candidates that are showing up now, including the Senate president is interested, uh, the former governor of Zanfara is interested, uh, and so many others. So, so it looks as if the North is not conceding power in any none of the parties, any of the major parties to the South. Also, we also see uh, from the meeting that happened in uh, Lagos yesterday that the Southwest is saying that they want the presidency to be uh, be there in the southwest. So that that defeats the um, the the idea by Ayo Ayo Adebanjo, who has been going around saying that it's not fair that presidency should move between the north and the southwest, that it should go to the southeast. So I want us to join that conversation. Of course, we know uh, our friend. Uh, um, his own is that God told him that he will be the next president. So I don't know how this will all work out. Um, so but, but let, let, let's start with you, um, Ovie. Uh, another week. Uh, tell us uh, what you are reading. You are reading of what's going on. Another, you know, interesting thing. I mean, I think, I think one thing to those who are saying Nigerians are suffering, there's poverty, there's suffering. I, for me, for once, I always disagree with that. And I think this goes to show it. If a private uh, company that was set up uh, eight years ago, APC called, can just wake up overnight and raise close to 20 billion within two weeks, and you tell me say Nigeria poverty day, I disagree with that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm Tunde, sorry from Tunde Bakare, he coming into the race. I think he's, uh, apart from many other things, I think he should be applauded. It's high time everybody joining there, not just being contesting, not trying to be one governor, uh, president, or other, but getting involved in the process is very important. Person like him who has uh, thousands of followers, that, that says a lot, even though for me, even though I read it, I read a meaning to his, uh, his uh, in dropping uh, 100 million, which is uh, that's a security position ahead of the next administration that is coming. Whichever way we're going to see, but in taking the action alone, it should be it should be recommended. We need more people to you know to be in the process so that so that to, to steal it will not that they will stop stealing, but it will not be that easy. The more people you have in the process, the more they have to think outside the box to to do whatever they want to do. And the northern has not the yielding this space for southern. I mean, it's like I ex it's expected. I never want to believe that the presidency is leaving the north. For one, I ever believe that the president is still going to, you know, you run in the north. It's going to remain in the north. I mean, this is politics. I mean, is that sound? All, right. All right, all right. We'll yeah. talk about that and the consequences of every uh, any of these things happening. Uh, Paul, welcome <laughs> back to the show. Paul, you can. Uh, thank you. Good okay. morning. Good. Good morning. Nice to see you again. Um, you've been causing waves everywhere because of your Mary and Martha, but that's a different topic for another day. Um, what is your take on uh, on what's going on in, in Nigeria today politically? Yeah, it's so funny with uh, everything that we keep seeing and everything. From what my brother would just said, uh, that possibility that the power is going to go remain in the north. I to some extent, I want to believe so in 50%, and another 50%, I am also thinking that the power may also likely move back to south, precisely southwest, because the, the rate that the old governors, everybody is moving in southwest, possibility that they must have got some good hint that the power may come to southwest. I know definitely the power is not going to the southeast. I'm sorry. Doctor damages. Sorry, power is not coming to your home. <laughs> <laughs> I have no candidates. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> yeah. So okay. why I'm thinking that because when you see the rate, the way power is moving, the way these um, southwest governors and the leaders they are striving, every one of them. You see Amosu, you see uh, Fire Me, you see Tinumbu, you see Osibanjo, and the likes. It's causing a lot of panic. We even after yesterday's meeting that they had, you know that they have good clear picture that possibility they might have it. That's why okay. everybody is rushing to go for it. Yeah, but, 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 yeah, but they, 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 they did not agree. They wanted to come but, up but with another the thing. They didn't agree on a consensus candidate. The, yeah, doctor, you have to understand that to agree for a, a consensus candidate when it comes to stuff like that, it must be a closed door. You understand it will go super negotiation and everything. And when you look at the panic, even though when you study Tinubu's countenance that yesterday very well, 
you know that it's time for these guys too to also bring Tinubu down. Say, go and be Godfather. Go and be our new IDB. Just go and relax. Let's do the working. You understand? You because you if this process also... You think he got the message I, yesterday? No, he's seeing the handwriting. He's seeing okay. the handwriting. We'll, we'll, we'll get back to that. Uh, Brian is joining us, uh, I believe, from UK. Brian, welcome to the show. Uh, Brian, you have to unmute yourself. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, welcome, welcome to the show. Uh, welcome, everyone. Um, I'm, I'm happy to be here. Rudolph, thank you very much. Uh, well done. Yeah. I, I hope you're not driving and talking. <laughs> If you have to, if you have to get to somewhere, we can let you in. You know, when you get to somewhere, you are free. We don't want to. We are not, We don't have insurance in this thing we are doing. You know, if uh, <laughs> if you tell them that you you were talking to a TV station and you got an accident, we may not be able to do anything. Uh, can you talk? Oh no, we can. You can come back. We have at least another one hour and a half, and you know, we're here. Brian. Okay. All right. Okay, I can hear him. So let's let's get him later on. Um, all right, let me get two more people in, and then we we continue the conversation. Uh, Obi, now welcome to the show. Thank you, Doctor Damage. Yeah, where are you joining us from? From Dallas, Texas. Dallas, Texas. Okay. Yes. Sir. All right. So uh, let me let me come to you. So what's what's your own observation on what's going on across uh, Nigeria, the political scene? Have you been following? Yes, I have. Um, it's, it's, <laughs> I don't know whether I'll call it madness. Sorry. Why? Because... Why are you saying madness? They are bringing out money. There's money in the country. You know, we thought there was no money, but we saw that uh, money is there. Yes, well, but that money should have been channeled into something more useful because most of these people know that they're not going anywhere anyway. Like so, who, um, wait, 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 like who, who, are, what are, who are you referring to? Most yeah. of them. Okay, for it, well, I don't want to, let's, let's not even call names, but, but. Uh, are you afraid? <laughs> you can't say names. Names. Yeah, oh, names. Names. <laughs> Okay, the one, the, the, so you can oh, just name one person okay. that is not going anywhere. Just so, one. Uh, okay, let me see. The, I can name three people that are going somewhere. <laughs> okay. <laughs> name one. Then the rest. Um, so we have, um, of course, the, the Jebedan. It's we not going the, anywhere. No, it's going, of course. Oh, okay. These okay. are the people going somewhere. Then we have okay. um, the VP. Yeah. Then, um, it, look, this guy had declared, was it today or yesterday, um, the CBN governor? Yeah, MFL. It's a, he, yes. We should give him two days to count the money and... and, <laughs> and, and <laughs> But, but, but look, why no, no, would he's, he's, waiting, he's waiting for the Naira to end that drop One dollar, one Naira in change in the, in the Naira will make, make all the difference for him. Oh, maybe, maybe so. Maybe he wants to convert it to dollars first. Then keep it. <laughs> then... All right, hold on, Obina. Hold on, Obina. let's get okay. Chinedu. Chinedu, welcome to the show. Chinedu, can you hear us? Uh, Chinedu, you may have to unmute yourself. Okay, good. All right, so where are you joining us from? Chinedu, can you hear me? Where are you joining us from? Yeah, of course, of course, I can hear you clearly. Okay. Good evening, all. Yeah, good. Ah! You are joining us from where, Chinedu? Okay, Chinedu can you hear us. All right. Um, I can. Let's, I can okay. Okay, where are you joining us? Yeah, from? I can hear you clearly, sir. Good okay, evening, go ahead. Paul. Yeah, we can hear you. I think there's a delay. Go on, go on, Chinedu. Where are you from? Where are you joining us from? Yeah, I'm joining from United Arab Emirates, Dubai, we said. Okay, good. Did you uh did you see uh, Portable when he was he stopped by? Oh, you don't know who Portable is. Okay, forget it. Um Basil, welcome to the show. Basil, can you hear me? Yeah, please, can you come again? I think. Uh, Chinedu, I, I know. Uh, Chinedu, I'll come back to you, okay? Basil, can you hear me? Can you unmute yourself? Okay, Basil, can you hear me? All right, let's go, let's go one by one. From by, I start with Bology. Bology, so how do you interpret what happened yesterday in Lagos? They, 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 they now say that it's more like the Last Supper, and um, that after that, um, 
what's the name um, um that after the last supper the the knights will come out and uh, everything will happen what is your take on what happened yesterday in Lagos? for those who didn't see that i will play the video after after Bolaji. Bolaji, you are muted can you mute yourself okay if you want to talk please unmute yourself i i didn't, know, I didn't mute anybody but Bolaji, can you do that Okay. okay I'll, I'll have problems. All right. Let me let me come to um. Let's say welcome to the show. Thank you, my brother. God bless. I I, I know you are joining us from Worcester. So um. So Basil, this is this is what happened yesterday. If if I'm I'm sure you you are aware of this. Um. The Southwest for candidates for, for president under under the APC they met in in Lagos. And they all they agreed on the one thing that we know they agreed on is that the power power should come to the southwest. Um, what is your take on that? <clears throat> Thank you, my brother. Um, you know, one one thing uh, I think there's still some noise that is yeah, it's okay. I'm trying to mute uh, everybody so that you can speak. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Okay. Um my brother, the only thing is that is happening um, in Nigeria. Uh, that if it's not, it's no longer particular to a, a region. It is um, something that um, gives every should give every Nigerian a very big concern. And um, the truth is that when some Elites, I call them elites because they are uh, the people who have uh, the uh, organizing thoughts of power of uh, <clears throat> of um, Nigerian government in their hands. They refuse to tell us the truth. Okay, and until we, the ordinary Nigerians, decide to call them to they are um to call them to order i don't think any nigerian would have the god to help nigerians so it's it's not left to us we here in diaspora and um from the good work we are doing to help nigerians understand that when we have a reg a region that have ruled Nigeria for several years, refused to make it um, open that those who have not ruled or th those who have not had the chance to partake in that uh, area of leadership um, would have the chance, then we are misleading ourselves. And if people can be misleading us, um, we keep quiet when will this end that's my question when will this end all right thank you thank you basil uh let, let me Bolaji. <clears throat> what is your take on what's going on oh you you can you still can hear all right um uh, <laughs> okay let me let me uh brian are you are you ready to talk no brian <clears throat> okay brian is not ready <laughs> so uh paul um, so we, we can rule out. We can rule out at this point, unless something changes. We can rule out power moving to the north because one of the arguments that are going on at this point is power going to the south, south because Jonathan apparently has been, you know, it's not coming out anymore. It doesn't look like he's going to be the candidate of APC uh, because because Jonathan essentially was waiting for everybody to say, "Come, we we'll give you this." Uh, he doesn't want to really fight for it. He's not even. Uh, well, can I say something happen. about that, yeah. Doctor Damidi? Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. So you know that they recently they said that they were making all the candidates to sign a withdrawal letter. Yes. So don't you think that could allow Jonathan to come in? 
<laughs> no, no, but I think I think what they were doing with that is the same thing that Obasanjo did. When when he makes you a senate um, a minister, you resign. You get to resign. You get to resign so that any day he wants, he will announce that you've resigned. So I think it's the same thing they are doing. Um, but I don't know how that will work out for them. You know, that's that's a good point. But I think mm. I, I don't think that all these people you are seeing in the south west and in the north that they're all going to um, wake up one Sunday day. Yeah, we are yeah. going to leave for Jonathan to be the candidate. I don't see that happening. Anymore. Yeah, that's why they're, maybe that's why they're making them, first, maybe kind of forcing them to sign that letter so that they can release it and say, oh, they've withdrawn. Yeah, but, but what, what yeah. would be left of the party? Are they, it's not, it's one yes. thing to withdraw, but another thing yeah, is how you too. now run and become, uh, and win the election. Uh, um, they, maybe they will dangle some carrot and say, okay, if you don't support him, then uh, we would expose the people here. So... <laughs> Remember, remember <laughs> the president had a closed door meeting with the Ashwaju and uh, I think yeah, with Ashwaju. Yeah, and what 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 is your take on that? Did, I mean, did that... when Ash, when Ashwaju came out of that meeting, he, he looks a dude. something <laughs> along the line that yes, the party will move on strong, we will work together mm -hmm. as one party, something along that line. And if there's anything I could read from that, I mean, it might it might be out of uh, uh, you know. The obvious is that maybe they will sit him down and say, Baba, we don't try, we don't hold, you know. Bring your mm -hmm. son, you know. Other, all your political sons have disappointed you. Bring your blood. Let's see where we can put him. Mm -hmm. Maybe making him vice president. Who, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> all right. That, that, that uh, is the wild one. Okay. Um, I'm back. Uh, I mean, okay. In okay. Nigeria, these people, anything is, uh, anything is possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Not, I agree. You know, I mean, the man has. I mean, you could. You might not like the man. He has. He has. He has done. Well. He has done that. The history will never forget his name politically. Mm -hmm. So he has worked hard, either for himself or for the politics mm -hmm. or the nation and all that. So they can't just uh, just disgrace him like that. I don't think they will want to do yeah. that. They, will, they might not give him the seat, but they will. They will, they will, they will, they will give him. They will. They will put him in a way. They, they will make it in such a way that he would have a. a, a he would have a need to support the party. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. What about his yes. wife becoming the vice president? You say she's yeah. not for you, right? Yeah. Yes. Uh, Something that's, like that's, that. That's, yeah. For now, that's not possible. If the power is going to come to South, the wife cannot be <laughs> vice president at, at the same time in South. So that's uh, not possible. That, well, don't, you think, don't you think that's the reason? It's possible, though. <laughs> Don't you think that's the reason we have multiple candidates from the south coming out so that to pave way for the north to assume to easily get? I think I think I think that's the way to raise money for the party. Mm -hmm. which is, to me, is a good move. Or oh, is just a way to raise money in case any anything happen? In case the party decide to say it won't scatter. In case the party say yes, mm -hmm. let me get you. I mean, it's a, it's a good way to raise money as far as I'm concerned. Or it's a good way to donate money. If if you look back mm -hmm. back in the days when APT, AP, uh, PDP they in charge. And they always throw like bigger party and all that. They encourage people to be donating 500 million, 200, even up to comedians, actors, everywhere donate. But the way the economy is and what is going on, there's no way they could do that. Now, to just find a way to say, okay, let everybody come to donate by buying for 100 million. I cook him. By the time you are, I think they are aiming 30 billion. That will go a long way to run whatever they want to do. All right. Yes. Uh, Balaji, are you here? <laughs> Yes, I'm here. Okay, good. Uh, so, so um, let's hear from you. Um, I think um, you've raised quite a lot of questions, um, starting from the 100 million blah, blah, blah that we discussed the last time. But if you remember last week, I told you that um, what the APC chairman said that if not on the presidential ticket to the South, it's a, something that you cannot take lightly. And if you look at it, starting from Monday, started seeing candidates coming out from the north. Um, I think that also kind of gave the Southwest um, candidates signal that if care is not taken, they are the verge of losing this uh, opportunity. And to me, the more candidates that you see that come from the Southwest, the brighter the chance of the candidate coming from the north, which is, to, is still politics. And if you look at it also, the more some of these uh, Tinobo splinter groups started, each one of them, instead of them working together to fight their boss, all of them are saying they want to become president. They are also like brightening the chance of Tinobo as well, because 
instead of um, Payemi or Shibajo, all of them to work together as a group to fight the boss. So all of you, you split, you become a boss of yourself. That way, at the end of the day, they are still actually playing into the hands of Tinubu. Like, he's, he's still going to have proper hand. If they divide the Southwest today, he's still going to have more delegate folks than other people. Because if they don't work together, he still has his own bulk, he still has his own loyalists, which are unfortunately still the largest in the Southwest. So I don't think... Okay, uh, have... okay. okay. Um, um, let, me, let me come. I want to know somebody who... Uh, this is what I heard about what's going on. It may not be true, but this is an idea that one reason why there are a lot of people coming out of the Southwest is also to give cover to the vice president. Because there is this charge that um, if Tinubu did not get it, the vice president will be seen as someone who betrayed Tinubu. So now that a lot of people are joining, it's not the fault will not be the vice president's fault anymore if Tinubu did not get it. Nobody will say that it was a Shibajo that turned around uh, because he didn't give space for Tinubu and he made Tinubu to lose that. Secondly, um, the fact that they are running today does not mean that in two weeks' time or three weeks' time, close to the, the actual convention, they could all say, you know what, I'm taking all my delegates, I'm taking all my friends to support this candidate. So just imagine this, if on the eve of the convention, all these candidates, we all, we all just bring down their campaign and say, I'm supporting one particular candidate. That would be a powerful, a symbolic uh, move. And uh, and that person would be strengthened. So so the fact that we're looking at it today does not mean that the Southwest will not come up with one candidate at the end of it, or two. So so um, if everybody... That's, yeah, that's, what that's, what that's, what respond. About. that's what the meeting was about, to find a way to for them to work together and bring one candidate, consensual candidate. Yes, yeah, I think I, I think that's that's what's going on. But let's let's go to um, uh, Okuja and Okuja. Welcome to the show. Thank you guys. Uh, so uh, Okuja, tell us what you are thinking. Are you, are you, you watching what's going on? I mean, uh, Should I say uh, something, like all, please? Like always, uh, I mean, I think I think you know it, it, it's, it's getting crazy. It's getting crazy. Uh, that's uh, what that's what I think. Uh, I uh, I don't know. I lost count of how many candidates uh, are out there. I think you know it's become a, like an ocean the market. Um, <laughs> uh, I mean, so I mean, and uh, no one is talking about ideas. Uh, no one is talking about uh, you know things to do. It's just talking about you know. Oh, I am uh, the one. I uh, just talking a bunch of you know nonsense. And um, everybody you know assuming that you know he or she, he or she is going to win. And uh, they are not thinking, you know, like, uh, I, I don't know, because uh, the, the problem is that I don't know how, the, you know, the option they're going to use, uh, the way they're going to use to, you know, do the nomination. It was the usual, you know, party people, you know, ward people, I don't know. So, but um, uh, if they had thrown that in open, I don't think, you know, a lot of these guys are out there, you know, they're just going to go home and, uh, you know, because uh, no one, if I, I mean, like, you know, the, the one the, the we did, like the US, you know, uh, is done in US or the Nigeria, I think they did it in 1990 something or so. The one they had to, you know, go to, you know, all the state or every party member voted. You know, yeah, I think they're, they're, they're doing something. They're doing the full thing. That's direct, direct primary. Yeah. Yeah. Direct yeah. primary, yeah. Yeah. Uh, is that what they're going to, going to do? No, no, they're using delegates no. now. They're using delegates. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, you know, uh, it's just an arrangement, you know, just the way I look at it. It's, uh, if it feels delegates, it's arrangement. And uh, they're not, if they, if they eventually, if they're going to concede, uh, they have, um, you know, they, they have, they have already, you know, they had a meeting already and they determined people who, 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 they, who they were anointing, they're not, I mean, the thought to run. But uh, the way it is going, I don't think you know. The, I don't think the North is ready to relinquish power. I think they want to continue, and you know that's the you know absurd part of it. You know they have ruled for how many years, and nothing. You know Nigeria has not changed. And I, I listen to Northern candidates. You know they talk so much trash. I mean it's something that you cannot you know write in a book. You know and you know they want to be president. I mean you look at Bala Mohammed. I just don't understand. You know like you know. I don't know. I didn't want. I didn't want to come to. Uh, I know, come to the studio today because I've been thinking. You know, what, what are we talking about? You know, what are we talking about? You know, nothing else. You know, who did no idea? I mean, you want to present again? You know, Nigeria suffered for eight years. I mean, Nigeria suffered for so many years, but these eight years, you know, it's been like you know, like you know, 
more, you know, like hor more horrific. And then you want to continue. And then some people are saying that they want to continue, you know, the eight years of our Bugari. I just don't understand it. I, I don't know. I'm confused. I, you know, we are, you know, let's just talk and I have fun. Uh, but I, Nigeria is doomed. That's basically. Okay, okay, doing. okay. Hold on, hold on. Let me let me play a small video. Uh, talking about Northerners and their intention. Uh, let me play a small video. Then Should I say something, please? Should I give something, please? No, no. no hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. We have led Nigeria before. Okay. Hold on. This is the uh, well, second we lead Nigeria the way we have led Nigeria before. Whether we are president or vice president or whatever, we will lead Nigeria. Not because we are better than anybody else, but because if you are doing a democratic game, the votes say vote who you want. We have the majority of the votes. Why do, do we need to accept a second class position when we accept when we can fight for and get a first class position? Why? Why does anybody need to threaten us and cajole us and intimidate us? If you don't bring the presidency here, you will see. OK, let's see. We are willing to see. But when we get that power, when we get that power, in the name of God, be humble, because power comes from God. If they tell you the North must take, play second fiddle, say no. But in what game? Please, sir, what are the rules of this game? If the rules of the game say you should vote for the candidate of your choice, vote for the candidate of your choice. If they don't like the fact that it may be a northerner who will emerge as president, too bad. If we want to support a southerner, we will support a southerner because that will be in our own interest rather than in somebody's interest. And we can decide for ourselves. We don't need anybody to tell us what to do. All right. We don't need anybody to tell us what, what, what audacity. Yeah, I mean, that, 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 that's the thing that you know makes me angry. What, what audacity! I mean, what, yeah. Why is it that the South? Why is it that the Igbos and the Yoruba? Yes. You know, the South, the South. The South I didn't even see this one. Middle belt. Why not they come together what? and take Nigeria away from Fulani? Mm, that is exactly what I'm talking I mean, about. Why, like, what why? audacity that they we would decide when we want to support the South? We would decide. South, South, and it's the host of South. <laughs> it's, it's so absurd. It's so, the, man, you know, the man is not speaking outside the. Outside the rules of the game, anyway, it's not. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, but the rules of the game, the, the rules also detect that you know people can form an alliance and you know grab the power from them. That's that is it because that's what they are banking on. They are. But they the, are not the, 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 the problem, the problem is, the problem is actually the south. Yeah. Okay, yeah. You have to understand something with politics. Politics one hundred one, basic politics that we understand very well. Uh, what is his name? Jim Woboro taught me that very well. He said, in politics, majority and minority. Minority, we always have their say, and majority, we have their way. You understand? But the, the problem with Akim uh, Ahmed Baba uh, Belo, the mistake he's making is that the majority don't need to talk much because definitely they will always have their way. You understand? But if, if, even though if they want to have their way, why don't you have your way and deliver? In America, nobody complained when Hillary Clinton and uh, Trump is contesting for president. They vote from New York out of 50 states. Nobody complained because our kids still go to school. If the school bus is running late, they still send us an email. They still give us a call. We don't really complain. Our roads are good. We know when the light turns on and the light turn, comes on when it's time. So we don't complain. So this is just the thing. But because of the dirty politics we play in our part of our world, that's where we complain over this type of issues. That is one. Get something straight with the Southwest, what is going on now. Over time, within another one, two, three weeks time, they will blame people from your side, the Southeast. How do they blame them? They say, see, the Southwest people have started coming together to find a consensus candidate. But Igbo people, they will not do things like that. Things that don't make any sense at all. You understand? And one of the ways, when you see the Southwest, another way around, when you see the Southwest, these governors, the Amusu, the so-called big, big name, the fire me, they are coming together. That is the type of weight that can break the Jacoban down. You understand? Because if all of them come together, they will not tell Tinubu that go down. They will tell him that we want to lift you up like IBB. Go and stay in your body norm. Like the way I be staying is Mina. You understand? We will come there and pay homage. You will be the movers and the shakers. You make these things. 
That way, if Tinubu see the people that is coming to tell him this, if he's smart, he will accept. Another way around, things might work that way. Things might just not work that way. But that is how they play politics. You know, it's it's dirty. If these people, if the Northern Ireland has been delivering, I don't think you will complain on this thing. You will even go back and even blame your so-called evil people that we have five governors from the Southeast. Are they really doing well as a governor? We have six governors in Southwest. Are they really doing well? We have six governors in South South. Are they really doing well? Is it enough uh, 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 full of any influence that is making them not do well? The fact is that these guys, they don't have anything to offer us. You understand? Maybe we are set to, we are just enjoying ourselves here, doing these things that we, we like to do. After watching all the news, we come here to do a little bit of review here and there, and the likes. Then my kids will ask me, Dad, what are you guys talking? The last time I came to Nigeria, the noise is too much everywhere. That's what my daughter told me. The other day, the other day my daughter is in the pool. She told me, she said, Dad, I'm missing mosquito. She's in the pool in America. She said, Dad, I'm missing mosquito because she just saw some grass. She wants to beat herself, but nothing is really biting her. <laughs> you know, mm. it can be very funny, mm. but that's my own truth. All right, all right. Hold on. Let me go to Chinedu. Chinedu, um, okay. Um, give, give us your. I know you're trying to talk. Give us your take on what's going on from your own angle. Where you are, you are in. The, okay. in go ahead. Okay. Good evening, all oh, once again. Yeah. Um, first of all, I want to commend the organizer of this particular program. Because in Nigeria, currently, all we are talking about is politics, politics. So, and it's very interesting. So, and over a couple of times, I've actually, you know, taken my time to follow the politics of Nigeria. Uh, before, I did see it as, you know, I did see politics as something that uninterested to me. But from this particular moment, I think that it, it, it's quite impressive that we, the youth, we have a lot of role to play. We have contributions to make as regards to politics of Nigeria. If we want to make things change, if we really want to change our, our country, our, our country, Nigeria. So we have a very, a very huge role that we need to play. So I just so, want to comment on something regarding yeah, the politics. You know, uh, yeah, sure. last year. Sure, do. Hold mean, on. Can you there's, a lot, there's a lot of noise where you are. There's a lot of noise where you are. Can you hear so me? I have, you know, we can, can you hear you, me? but we have to we have to let you go. There's a lot of noise where you are, so we can't hear you very well. Okay. Um. All right. So let, let me come back. What are the consequences of of what we are seeing? Because all these things are going to they have consequences. So for instance, if the power if power remains with the north, if they force their candidate to take over APC and PDP, which is which is possible. What what is the implication of that, uh, Balaji? What do you think will happen? Um, if another candidate takes so far in twenty twenty three, right? Yes, it might actually contribute seriously to the instability of Nigeria. Well, um, if you look at it for except, let me say now, let me maybe thought for us like. Uh, a neutral party that people say that okay they are not part of the mainstream like maybe the youths organized together somebody from the north happens to be the one that will, that might be a different board game but if apc or pdp uh end up producing a core northern candidate it's going to be it's going to result in a serious instability the agitations in the in the south is going to increase Especially southeast and southwest. Okay. All right. Um, no, hold on, hold on. Uh, 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 Balaji, let me go to Brian. I think Brian is ready to talk to us. Uh, Brian, welcome to the show. Yeah. Um, yes. Um, I have to be honest, I've been listening and um, I don't really think um, anyone here um, shares. Uh, the same level of frustration because um as I do because um I have really given up on the country. So um that's my basic and uh I don't really think I'm 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 actually the right person to, to speak because I really uh, see Nigeria from a different perspective. Um what I mean is Okay, let me start by saying 
what I do for a living, um, I do like asset management and asset management and projects. So what that means is if an asset, uh, let's say a power plant or if, you know, building has basically uh, has structural issues or mechanical issues that in order to repair that particular asset, you now have to spend more than that asset is worth, right? You have to destroy that asset and start again. And that's how I look at Nigeria. I personally don't see, um, when each time I talk about these things, people say, okay, you have to be realistic. We are where we are. We have to deal with it. So um, my mindset is as such that if we are going to continue, if we are going to continue uh, with these same foundational issues with the same politicians, then we shouldn't really expect anything different. We should just continue fooling ourselves, really, because the, the truth is, you know, uh, I can't really see, yes, I'm equal, right? But I'm not going to be supporting people be or any Igbo politician. Why, 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 why not, Brian? Why not? Because the structure itself is dead. We don't have a good foundation. Let, let, let me explain. How is Peter be going to, uh, or, or any, any fool from the Southeast, how, how, how are they going to, for example, uh, um, change, make certain changes within the constitution or, 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 or basically, let's take the security issue. How, how is a Peter B or, or Nomahi or, or Mohalu going to address these key fundamental issues, right? With the kind of configuration we have in the, in the legislative, you know, uh, legislative house, be it the lower or, or upper chamber, but how is that? How is that going to be changed? How is that going to make any difference? Look, um, I did work in Nigeria. I do know a, a little bit about the electricity uh, infrastructure in Nigeria. I did five years, um, managed um, one or two things. Uh, uh, within that uh, utilities uh, sector. So I, I have made this point that if you don't get foundational issues addressed, you will still have these problems. Let me, let me even talk about the electricity issue. I have explained to my friends to say, look, I accept there are so many issues within the various value chain, be it generation, be it transmission, be it distribution. However, if you just look at the architecture of our uh, transmission architecture, you can clearly see that it's designed, right? For it's centralized and it's designed as such that uh, uh, the people who own the country actually control these assets, right? Um, yes, I know you privatize the generation, you privatize. However, because of the architecture design, everything needs to feed into one okay. place. Okay. okay, Brian, 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 let me, sorry, because we want to get to a lot of people and we want to uh, make it brief. We will come back to you. But what I wanted to ask you is, um, mm -hmm. don't you think that if you have a different leader that probably we think in a different way that he could move the country in a different direction like you know decentralizing things if mm -hmm. if you have a leader let's say i don't know i don't mention now i don't know who, who has that mm -hmm. platform mm -hmm. but someone like say Peter B or or, or, mm -hmm. or, Mara or whoever is the person mm -hmm. to say that okay you know i'm here i'm pushing for this to change if you have someone like that, like that at the center it could it could, could happen my brother listen to me their fundamentals in life we should I, I, my problem with nigerians is that we we look at things differently we don't look at how the world works let me give you an example you take uh, 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 lewis hamilton and put lewis hamilton in a car that the engine has knocked and you're there making noise that lewis hamilton still win the race or still make progress why do nigerians think like this 
<laughs> or you have a house, you're built, you, you have a house that the foundation is already structurally failed and you're still making noise, building windows, building the next floor, building another floor on it and not thinking that, look, that for me, they're fundamentals in life. I, look, whatever, forget, look, uh, guys, I went to university with Rudolph so that he knows, no, 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 we went to the same university. In fact, we stayed in the same room, the same house, so Rudolph knows how I think, right? I, I don't like pretense. I don't like people. That's my biggest problem with Nigerians. We pretend a lot. As you, if you ask me who my presidential candidate is, you know who my presidential candidate is. You want to ask me? Yeah, yeah. Tell us. Say, Gumi, let's get down. Let's give the look, look, look. I don't like pretend. I don't like pretend. We are pretending. We pretend too much in Nigeria. It's annoying. Oh, all right, all right, Brian, Brian, stand by, stand by. I like the fact that you're here today, and this is wonderful. I've been trying to get you to come on the oh, show. Uh, we, who will be advice? Who will be advice? I mean, who will be <laughs> advice? Yes. Out and make him <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So, 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 this is this is fascinating. Alex, uh, Alex and Jocko, welcome to the show. Thank you. All right, Alexis uh, is also uh, the you know. Well, let him let him talk to her. Alexi. So, looking at what's going on um in Nigeria today, what is uh, what? What do you think it will happen, and what are the consequences? Because it looks like you know people are moving on. Like uh, Brian is saying that the structure is failed, that the country is now workable. We should just stop talking this. But but the candidates are bringing out money. They are, they are giving money to people, buying delegates, and moving on with the process. We can't stop the process, can we? No, Alexi. What's your take? Uh my people. One, one minute. <laughs> okay. There is something called a runaway reaction in chemistry. Hmm. When you begin to add the reagents and everything, there's a point that you will get to where your reaction is no longer going to get to the result you are looking for. At that point, sometimes liquids will become solids and con everything will become and blocked. At that point, you have no reason to continue because it's already shown you that the point you have reached, even though you still thought you were going to do more and it's going to get you to your goal, but that you can't. So you have to discard everything and start afresh and try to avoid the mistake you made the first time. So discarding everything at a uh, a runaway chemistry result or reaction result is the wisest thing to do. That's my take. Oh, how do you discard it? Let's say, let's say you are now brought in and said, do what you need to do to fix this country. What do you think should be done? Well, you, in terms of this country, that country that you are, that the, the country we are looking at now as this country needs to become that country. When Chinua Ajibe said, there was a country. He meant that a new country is what we find ourselves. There was an old one that worked to a certain degree. So we have to discard what has gone so bad that it can't be fixed anymore. See, the people who are active in what we have now have no solution. And I don't see how you are going to now get that solution from them. The structures we have now, hey, let me use one example. My father worked for the railways. One time in this in Nigeria, railways was, I didn't know then, but I now know that we were probably the best of that particular system of movement of goods and human beings. But the moment we step into the war, all the technocrats, all the technicians, people who kept that system going, were nowhere to be found again. I, I, you, you figure out where they went. Since that time, nothing railway has come back to the level we were before. What did we do? We are now trying to start a new railway system, new gauge, a new coaches. We haven't fully done it yet, but we could not carry on with the old ones because everything 
had you know gone into shreds. What we have now cannot yield us anything new better than what we are seeing. If Nigerians still want to toy around with what we have now, we will just be where we are. The, the runaway reaction in chemistry equivalent. We won't achieve anything with what we have now. Okay. All right, Obin, now. <clears throat> um, there's always this conversation when we talk about what's going on. There's something going on, and there is something mm -hmm. that people want to see go happening. Um, what is going on is moving. You know, the process is going on. You know, June by June mm -hmm. 12th, we know the candidates. It doesn't matter yes. what people who are saying. So, so what do you think? What, something has to give at, at one point. What do you think we give in this process, this dichotomy and divisions? Well, you're, you're talking about in selection the candidate from both parties? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I think something, what needs to give is the Nigerian interest. Like, what does Nigeria need now? So let's forget all these people. Oh, Wiki, I built them, fly over. I did. Enough, we are, we are done with misguided development. It's not enough to build roads, build these that are not, there uh, is of no financial value. What I mean is, if here now, if you want to borrow money for something, you know that you, you're doing a business or something that would give you back the money to pay back. Now you, you build road, of well, what value is it? So what we need now is to have a system where we invest, maybe if you're building road, you call private investors who will bring you most of the resources, then they can maybe put toll there. From there, they are, they are, they are, you're able to, they're able to get the money. You didn't spend government money, but you have infrastructure that will help other um, companies come in and invest. Those are the kind of things that, um, we need to be looking at. And we need someone that is thinking in that line. We need someone who will come in and say, okay, we have a 20-year vision. And then that 20, what will Nigeria achieve in the next 20 years? We'll break down the 20 years into maybe two years or five years and milestones and say, okay, what, do we, what are we going to achieve? Because right now, we keep on borrowing money, keep on borrowing money. At some point, whatever assets we have will be useless because all of them will go towards servicing loan. So we need someone, at the end of the day, both parties need to pick somebody who has that mindset of, okay, saving and having to do to reconfigure the economy to the extent where we will stop all this waste that we are doing, you know. All right. So the uh, yeah. So at the at the end of the day, for PDP, maybe P two B, for APC, I don't know who, I don't know, who, I don't, I, I don't know who who is because at the end of the day, most of these people coming out are not really saying anything that they want to do. The only person, maybe people, few people, maybe Fire and me had really brought out a plan, uh, even, uh, even Osibanjo, but the rest are not really seeing anything. They're just, oh, I have the money uh, to, to contest. I can match this person pocket for pocket. Those, those are the kind of nonsense we're hearing. We need someone who is serious, who is serious-minded, you know, that will come in and start trying to curb all these unnecessary expenses. And yes, we talk about, I know your, our brother mentioned about structure. It's still men that will build the structure. But we need someone who will come in and build a structure, and then we'll keep to that structure over time. All right. All right. Let me, let me yeah. come to you, Ovie. Ovie. Um, mm -hmm. Tomorrow on another program, 90 Minutes Africa, we are going to talk to Omoya Leshawere, um, who is an outsider in, in this process. I know, I know you're laughing. I know your position. But I, I want you to talk about this, this issue in terms of if the two candidates, the two major parties are failing, what stops someone like Alexi from being the candidate uh, that will go and destroy this structure? Because, because even to destroy it, you may have to go to the center and, and rebuild in a way you want. And, and it, so we have these candidates on the, on the sideline, you know, like, like Shoure and Mora um, to a certain extent. Why can't we, as a people, go that route if we think that the major parties are not going to be able to deliver the kind of change we want what is what's stopping that i think what is stopping us is still this uh belief that uh as if uh, <clears throat> whatever that happened around us in our life happened naturally now god nothing happened within the human grave within the human self that we did not contribute knowingly or unknowingly 
for us to cheat, because I, I did as, uh, reckon with uh, Mr. Alex's uh, uh, viewpoint and uh, uh, the other, your friend, I just Brian, that Brian, Brian. Yes, it's not working. And uh, Obinati was kind of uh, prescribed uh, what to do. We need somebody to come in. No, we need to go in. Yes, we don't need to go with the two current political parties now. But as far as I'm concerned, that is still our best shot. In the sense that no, none of these parties are actually have a solid foundation yet that can go for the next 50 years. They see the wobble. But because we are not interested in what politics is all about, these people can do and undo and undo. So for us to come in and change it, we have to actually be interested in the system. If not, even if we follow show or repartage, nothing is going to change. We have to be actually ready to be involved financially and everything. All of us know the content. That's a fact. All of us cannot be on ground, but that's a fact. How much have we come out of our own feet for our pocket to contribute to these other parties? Because that's what it takes. Just as uh, the other brother said, we can come here and talk as we want. But if we don't play active role, you know what work. If there's anything, Trump election assures something. We can say it's an outsider. But did anything change? He still take the structure of the party before if we even feel win. So the fact that we see now we are just 20 years in this process, if we, in the next 20 years we are not, deli we not deliberately get involved in the process, how the parties are being formed, how they are being run, not necessarily to contest, but every step of the way, if we, are, if we don't make that deliberate attempt, to, nothing is going to change. You ask the question, if a booking man come back again, what is going to happen? Nothing is going to happen, but I hope that will spur us to get involved in the process. Because mm. what uh, was his name? <clears throat> the video you show. What did they mm. give that man mind they talk? Not just because they have the population, but they have the population that care about how the process work. They are very, very aware of how the political system work. That region. Now, what did the man the back on be that? Not necessarily because of numbers. All right. So on our own side, we don't care. We don't imagine now within the same and zone and comes out. Which part of South? If there's no okay, Kemoku now, go, go bring one candidate. I am pretty sure we can't do it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, now go bring one candidate. We know go to produce one candidate because we don't even know how it works. Okay, hold on. Uh, let me play a video of Ateze in 2019 <laughs> talking about why uh, the South uh, is. Like somebody like Kubuhale, after another. Ten not an like Tomba like Buhale, after another four years, eight years in presidency. We give you both the power, nobody else will do that. Only Buhale. Oh, where do you know the power here, Kada Buhale? Oh, Buhale will give us power. We transfer the presidency to Ibama. Because you have conscience. It takes a decision, it doesn't bother who you are, where you come from. Yeah, Mr. President, I'm very happy. Somebody like uh, Umeha is a young man. Who fears God? Who think about the poor like yourself? Give him power to read to read the paper and not just say, "Oh, I'm very grateful." I salute you, Mr. President. Thank you. Um, I know some of you might have thrown up uh, where you are. If you throw up, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but that's uh, that is in 2019. Talking about people giving power to Ekene. Uh, were you were you waiting for for Buhari to give you power? <laughs> uh, nothing is given. Uh, I, I mean, uh, I um, I want to say something about what Brian said. Uh, I think uh, um, Nigerians, you know, I think one of the mistakes you know we make is always we try to uh, 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 the analogy they use always when it comes to the structure, Nigerian structure, and the structure of a house, and uh, you know, from what he said, you know, the a, a car and. Uh, uh, Louis Hamilton. I mean, you know, that's why we have uh, um, in every country, you know, the, when you have a constitution, you always do an amendment to the constitution. Um, I think, you know, the first thing that we have to do is to get someone uh, who is willing, who knows uh, what he has to do, what he or she has to do, and, uh, and they back him up, uh, you know, with people who 
who really want these changes. Um, uh, but it, it is uh, changes uh, could be made to the constitution to you know give us what we want uh, with the imperfect one we have right now. And um, again, also you know like uh, you know what you guys were saying about uh, the uh, what uh, I think uh, um, what did Alex says. Um, no, okay, no, yeah, just like you know, like I said, the thing is, you know, the, the problem is this that you know we haven't been able to like uh, 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 we don't make effort to to get involved with just talking. You know, a lot of Nigerians, you know, like especially in the south, the youth, you know, they talk, you know, they talk, they on Twitter, they say things, but when it comes to actually, you know, just doing something about it, you know, we don't do it, you know, we talk about a third force law, somebody like Shore, what does it take? You know, I mean, there are limitations to parties like that. You know, I mean, uh, to these smaller parties because they don't have uh, people all over Nigeria. You know, PDP and the APC, whatever they have, uh, they have structures already. But that doesn't mean that you know a third force. You know, like we know uh, Emmanuel Macron. You know, won won the presidency in France you know, not, not the first time. You know, he was uh, unbelievable. I mean, a candidate nobody expected him to win. <laughs> You know, but because of you know, uh, people because people grassroots they liked him, they started promoting him, and at uh, this age of social media, and uh, it, it, uh, it, it took off, and uh, common people started identifying with him. You know, but the same thing, you know, like show okay, for instance, show if you show is the candidate you want to uh, support, how many words do we have in Nigeria? What we need to do just you know, one person in each word, you know, able to sell show to his world people. You know, be able to like you know, like if for instance, I think I've said that somewhere before. What does it take? You know, like you know, print your word picture. It doesn't. You don't need. You don't need your word to come and they bring money to give you money. You know, for you to get involved. You know, if one of you, you know, go to your award. You know, take you know, take, spend like fifty thousand. Uh, um, uh, 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 make posters of your Put it all over your award. You know, people. How many words do we have? I think we have about seven hundred and something local government. I'm not sure. I think do we have up to three thousand words or so. I'm not sure. Anyway, but I mean that's how changes, you know. People, people affect changes. When you expect the, the north, people are tired in the north. People are stoning, but people they stone Buhari's picture, they stone his banner. You know, people are tired. You know, this is an opportunity for people like Shawari or that you know, people, you know, people who are grassroots who want to go grassroots to take power from the APC and PDP. You know, right. so that's what we need to do. All right. Um, I, I want to mention that um, if you look at the number of registered voters at this point, uh, the north, northeast, and northwest, and north central, um, they 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 are they have more than ten million votes. I think last count I looked at, I'm looking for the exact figure. More than the whole of the southern part of Nigeria. The southeast is the least of um, all the all the geo geopolitical zones in terms of number of registered voters. So, and if we're going into an election, it's going to be an election and people are going to vote. And that, that's where everything starts. Um, Solomon, welcome to the show. Thank you. So, let me ask you a question. Okay, right? go ahead. Yeah. You keep, keep talking about this data, the north, this, not that, southwest, south, south. How many people in Lagos or in Kanu or in Calabar or in Cross River State are from other places? Do you think everybody registers in their village? Why do you people keep using this data? Look, oh, well. let me tell you something. The biggest population house in any other states, near the other place, are people from, from the southeast and south south. So outside the eastern zone. What do you say about that? No, Brian, you are right. You're right. We have to. Brian, Brian, when you look at figures, you have to, the figures are what they are. And we, we didn't break it down. We didn't say that Igbo people are less, um, um, they are less in the number of people that are registered to vote. We are saying the people in the north are this. So, but when you see the result from the north, you don't see, when you see the result from Kanu State, you don't see a remarkable number of people voting for a party different from the party that most people in Kanu are voting for. So what it tells you is that most likely, the, the people who are from other parts of the country registered in Kano, that they did not vote. You understand? So, but, but the point is that at the, when you analyze anything, you have to start with the figures you have. If you go and break down the figures and say that in Lagos... No, I'm not going to start with the figures when already foundationally you know that mm -hmm. the census since our initiation is wrong. 
why are you people still promoting this Trump rubbish? But 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 oh, then but then there are changes have been made to, to off, the I electoral know. system. That the vote is changing is from outside. Uh, Brian, 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 I'm sorry if I will say this. One thing we will understand if we will tell ourselves the truth when it comes to voting in Nigeria. I am sorry with my use of word. It is mediocre that votes. Technocrats don't vote. On that day, we will read newspapers, we will listen to radios and everything. Do not have more mediocre than technocrats. You understand? There are people who don't come outside. For example, the women in the north, they don't come outside, the Muslims. On that day that they come out to go and vote, they tell them, go this way, everybody follow. That's why they, some people will tell you that they not and naturally, they have this military in their DNA. They follow order. Vote for say Baba, everybody go say Baba. You understand? You are talking about the Southeast where they are very, very educated people. People don't vote. They look at them and everything. They say, I have what it takes to take care of my family. We analyze these things. The so-called technocrats that will vote, don't vote. It is the mediocre that vote. That's why we get all these numbers. We don't vote. Let's tell us the truth. All right. I'll, we'll come back to Brian. I want, I want to explore this more. Um, but Solomon, welcome to the show. Tell us where you're joining us from and um, you are taking on some of the conversations we've been having. I'm joining from Dubai. Dubai. Okay. So um, so are you following the political situation in Nigeria? Yes, yes. I'm following it. But just that, let me just say this. You see, one thing I understand about our political and policies in Nigeria is that we are not going anywhere. It doesn't matter if it's a soware or whoever. You see, the law here, the law and the policies can never take any of us to anywhere. So it does not matter who is coming, how good you are, or the kind of heart. But first, you have to go into the constitution. The constitution have to first be in work on. Because if we did not work on the constitution, I'm telling you, we'll still, the same thing that we are facing will keep repeating over and over again. So this is just the issue we are facing in Nigeria because nobody is really talking about the constitution and the, um, the policies. You can just say uh, the same thing. You can just uh, become a president and the constitution is affecting everybody. Business, so all they just care about is uh, for, for their own personal pocket. So I don't see how it can change. Mm. If we, are, we should be talking about um, um, a good person, this person has the people in the mind, we should also look at the aspect of the policies that Nigeria and uh, constitutions they have already put in place that have made people to be stagnant, not going forward, not going back. So we are only going backward. So this is the vital um, problem we are having until they look at it and solve this issue. I'm telling you, it doesn't matter who is good or who is going for a president. For me, I don't even, I'm not voting for, and I don't even have a preferred candidate can, can, because I know that the background is still errors. There are thousands of errors in the background. See, these errors are being clear. Nothing good will come out. All right. That is me. Okay. Th thank you. Um, uh, Brian, come back, come back, come back, come back. Um, so so let, let's, let, I want to explore this idea with you. So you believe that, and I know you're not alone, there are a lot of people who believe that, that the structure is so bad that it has to be brought down and a new structure, uh, a, new, a new construction uh, from the scratch. How do you think um, it should be done? If you, if you have the opportunity to make a presentation, how this should be done, um, what, what will you present? For me, firstly, they have to dissolve. No, 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 the Solomon, no, Solomon, not you. I'm talking to Brian. I, you, I, I know you are. Yeah, yeah I'll, 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 I mean, first and foremost, um, I would look at the various, I'll start from the history of the country, right? So um, when we had this amalgamation, right, there were people who signed up to it. There were people who did not sign up to it. So fundamentally, I will start by having some level of dialogue to now come up with a way. If I, I'm not going to use uh, uh, um, the, the House of Assembly or the National House of Assembly the legislature. No, it has to be something along the lines of maybe ethnic nationalities coming up with their own representatives to now have this dialogue to now decide what form of government they want, what form of governance they want, 
what structure they want, a loose confederation or not. Just have people have some part for people to partake in the process. Because when you look at the constitution, it says we the people. I am asking myself, I am 50, 54 years old, and I can't remember any time that I participated in, in any any constitutional this thing that uh, in 1999. So for me, that is the starting point. Okay, okay. All right. So so you essentially you believe in the kind of idea that Tony Nadi and, and the, their group are, are promoting. Which is, which is, you know, bringing down the constitution through um, this kind of consultation and different ethnic groups. Is, is that what you believe? Okay. Yes. All right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, let me come to you, uh, Alexi. Alexi, I know that the other group, there are groups like the Oduduwa people who are pushing for Oduwa Nation. There are also people who disagree in the structure of the country and they want something different. And I know also the Biafrans are also elements in the Biafran movement are also... Uh, of that opinion that nothing is working. So let me ask you, what do you think about, about the people who have decided that it's not even worth even trying anything? Not, not voting, not voting, not finding a negotiated way of, of changing the situation, but probably taking up arms or probably um, calling for the total uh, bringing down of the country. What do you think about that, that plan or that, that pursuit or that approach? I believe there is nothing the arms can achieve that people cannot achieve when they have the right stuff in their head. I grew up in Lagos. I started reading and writing Yoruba before I did Igbo. I had friends from the north, friends from everywhere in my school. I can name some of them. They will be surprised to hear me if they are still alive today. We once had a country that tended to work, but it wasn't allowed altogether to work, and everything went haywire. Today, we're at a point where the best thing is to go even beyond where we were at that time, because those are the people that agreed and started working. But things have gone so bad today that we need to sit down and decide how we want to go. Let me tell you something that might not please anyone amongst us here today. No matter who is made the president, my recommendation is in order for us not to fight, whoever comes there should immediately call a roundtable conference of all the nationalities. It should begin, in fact, the constitution should have, they should, it shouldn't be thrown in with that constitution where they are forced to start following it. If they don't, then they'll come and arrest them. Whoever is going to come to the power should be open to whether Nigeria still has to remain what it was. Let the person's aim and first, second, and third purpose be to find out if Nigeria has to continue the way we you know it as a one country today. When the people say yes, of course, we move on. But the, that leader must be willing to hear whatever answer that the people have. And decisions should be made based upon that. So the only thing is, when you talk about arm, arms and, and stuff like that, to, to obtain something new is because there's a resistance to fairness of what human beings, not animals, should do to, to settle their problems. If they allow people to express themselves and come make a referendum, that's what should determine it. And let us see what Nigerians want. The old Udua thing that is, has come up now was not there before, but people have come to know and seeing clearer where we came from and where we're heading, that is not going to be of any good to anyone. This confusion will continue if we pretend that it's going to work, because it's not going to work. All right, all right. Um, thank you. Let's, let, let, oh, hold, hold on, okay. Hold on, hold on. I'll play a video. Easy. I'll play a video, then we'll come back. You know, it was easy when you were there as a military leader, but what made it?
this is this is my time as uh, it is like, easy and you know it was easy when you are there as a military leader but what made it easy justice with justice you can hold nigeria well justice is the key if you do justice to all and sundry and i say all and sundry because allah said for either come to bain and nurse Bain and nas and to have will be ugly. If you are going to judge between people, do justice. Irrespective of their tribe, religion, or even political inclination. Justice must be done to whosoever deserves it. Power can remain in the hands of an infidel if he is just and fair. But it will not remain in the hands of a believer if he is unfair and adjust behind every crisis anywhere in the world is injustice the solution to that crisis is justice all right um I have a question for... go ahead go ahead uh, go ahead yes, uh, I'm, I'm curious who, who, who are those or who are behind the idea who will come the idea of us going to the taking to presidential system of government. Ah. What what inform it? What what? Uh, and particularly, why do we tour the, the system of the American system? Maybe you can you know because of your experience in life, you you are privy to that uh, info. Mr. Alex. Oh, Alex. Who made yeah. who brought about the new system? Yeah. What inform What inform me that who are the people that actually pursue this uh, presidential system and why what? the American system in particular? See, there's no one single area that our problem came from, but there have been more concentration of what brought us where we are, one time or the other, from one place to the other. So it's not about the people. If we go back to those people. These people we call our founding fathers, none of them was a saint. They all had some terrible things that they contributed to us where we are today. Some did it more than the others. So it's not necessary to look back. But we are saying what we had then seemed to have had less intensity than what we are seeing today as the impunity of getting things going in the, in, in the way it is and we're heading nowhere with it you know okay all right uh Balaji, let me come to you um uh, my time school was talking about justice and and if you break down everything going on in nigeria you see that it's at the bottom of everything is about justice injustice uh, in fact uh Patrick tommy once said that nigeria is the most unjust country in the world yes uh, so so when when you when you think about justice how do you think we can have a just federation where people will feel that we are not wasting our time every four years having an election that won't change anything. How do you think that could come about? Um, just like what uh, my Thomas said in that clip, and like every other clip from him, he's a, um, a rival leader from the North, at least if not Nigerian leader that everybody respects. Um, if we let's take it to our homes, our relationship with friends and wherever, if you are my friend and you are not fair, to me, definitely that friendship is not going to last long, right? Mm -hmm. So within the country itself, if the way we rule, it's all about you pay for people within your own clique, your tribe, your friends or wherever, it's not going to work. And that also brings to like, okay, maybe take it to like, if you have... You are awarding contracts to your friends. If those friends doesn't meet up with the standards, definitely still going to result into bad governance. All of these uh, agitations that you see in the South, even in the Middle West and all of that, that's the result of injustice. Like you see people from certain part of the country, they feel like they dominate every other person and it's always their way. To me, this justice and fairness doesn't necessarily represent, uh, mean that People from certain part of the country must rule. I think, for example, now I'm living in this city today. Now, if you ask me that who's my mayor, who's my wherever, I'll be struggling to actually mention the name because I don't care about it. I pay my tax, I drive on a good road, I have security, I have every other thing. 
which is very good. But going back to Nigeria, one you started seeing like is a lack of infrastructure, bad governance. Everybody was not paying attention to who exactly is the leader. What are the source of our problems? And all of those questions start coming. But what I would say, because instead of criticizing them so much also, I don't like, like blaming people more and not looking at myself that well, you know, I have done better. I will say this, some people fought for independence for us. It was a tough fight, tougher than what we are seeing today. Some people fought for this democracy that we currently have now, which is tougher than the battle that we have ahead of us. I think all of us also, we need to do more rather than just talking. These people that are actually uh, ruling this country right now, they are this flexible, if I may use that word. If everybody that is so concerned that the country is not well governed, can actually put it into action. And also that very much includes me as well. Because if you continue this way, continue to cry, this country will continue to be in this same mess for the next 50 years. Now I'm talking about, okay, the constitution is not good, whatever, whatever. I tell you this much, the, country, the constitution is not perfect, and no country in the world has a perfect constitution. I'm not saying that our constitution is good, and I'm not trying to under, like, play down that the constitution is not good. But we have, it's because we have bad people governing us. If you have right people in power, things will change remarkably. There's no, it's no, if you like so rare today now, if I look at him, like, no, any, any candidate that is actually fine for this position today will be able to, like, make sure that everything, like, follow the constitution properly to actually get it. Like, I look at it now, uh, so rare party now, he's propelling himself to be the candidate right now. Nobody's really challenging him. I know there's a faction and all of that. Is he ready to throw it open to do primaries? Is he want to do all of those things? So everything seems like it's complex, it's unresolvable, but I feel like if we all pay, like, contribute our own coder, go in there and try to, like, solve the problem, it's solvable. It's not a problem that we cannot solve. Uh, it would be easier if we can get one of the major parties to get a very good person there, which I wish as well. If so, where is contesting very good, but I still want like APC, PDP to have good candidate as well. Yeah. Be there. If at the end of the day, we can't get a third force that is very good to save the country, let's have maybe the best of the worst from those other parties as well to get there, not the worst of them. So, All right. Uh, All right. All right, thank you. Uh, we're running out of time, so let's let's kind of uh, move this uh, kind, kind, kind of wrap it up by saying, um, what are go what are what are we thinking should be the um, most likely? We we know that this is an unjust system. Um, the structure is bad, but there there's going to be election, you know, in the next um, one year, and there are going to be candidates that will be nominated. And what are the consequences now? Let's look at the consequences of all these things that might happen. Um, I'll start with you, Ovier. What is going to be the, uh, I don't know if I've asked you this because you've been here from the beginning. What, what do you think would be the consequences of, uh, say, the Southwest, none of their candidates becoming a candidate of any of the major parties, APC or PDP? What, would, what do you think will happen? Some people are proposing that you may find some governors uh, in the Southwest joining the Odua Nation agitators and saying that this country is not working and we want to leave the country. What do you think will happen in that situation? I think, I think the, the Southwest, I, I, I think they are ungrateful if I should have to put it that way. They have no reason to be even. Well, I won't say they have no reason. They, if they qualify, they should vie for the presidency. But if you want to follow it, you know, going by the regions per se, they started the, this current uh, dispensation by really starting with the first eight years and come again, have the vice presidency for another eight years. And if you pay attention, particularly to this uh, Buhari administration, they still, the euro uh, start uh, getting a lot more than every other uh, tribe or region in this present administration than any other one. So I don't expect them to, you know, raise alarm if they did get it. I don't, I don't think they, I don't expect them to get it, by the way. But I don't expect them to raise any alarm. But again, 
what we actually uh, what we have with this, that we has a lot to do with who becomes the next president if the person decides to factor everything that just play out in a while ago on this platform, starting from the, the video you play from Metama, if the person applied justice, and uh, could I take everybody into consideration? I don't think uh, any, uh, anything will happen. The Yorubas don't have any, they don't, uh, they don't have any reason to, to, to raise anything, uh, any, uh, any, in any form of disestablishment to the Nigerian state, as far as I'm concerned, they have benefited a lot from the Nigerian state. At this point, they should accept whatever uh, that, that happens to their country. You know, okay. So, so. All right. Thank you, Paul. Yeah. Paul, the same question. What I, what do you think should be the um, the, the consequences? Uh, Judge Benashaw said that uh, <laughs> there are two tragedies in, in life: getting what you want and not getting it. So. Looking at what you think will happen, what do you think will be the, the, the consequences of that? Yeah, well, if you talk about the consequence when it comes to the Southwest, I think um, obviously spoke well, you understand. Um, 1999 to 2007, the Southwest took eight years uninterrupted. Between 2015 going to 2023, they took another eight years for vice president. And the number fourth position, the, the Speaker of the House, the same starts where they still hold it. So I strongly believe that they don't really have anything. Neither at the end of the day, they negotiate their way, like Tinubu and the like, the work on him, probably make the wife vice um, Senate president, as the case may be, if they feel they want to compensate him for what they negotiated in the other room. <laughs> then if they didn't negotiate very well on the other room, that's when they might feel bad. But the everyday Southwesterners, I don't see them feel bad. You understand? They might use the so-called out, the mediocre on the streets to say all those stupid things and everything. But by the time they release the military, the police and the likes, everybody will go back to business. I don't really think anything will happen. That's my take. Okay. Thank you. Brian. So, um, looking at the situation now, there was uh, a clip I wanted to play, but I don't have it, where, where uh, the president, Buhari, was, um, the world leaders appealed to Buhari in a Bonny state to release Nam Dekano, and he said that um, the court system should handle that. Uh, what crossed my mind was, I was thinking, um, the, the, the Boko Haram members who were pardoned by the government, um, they didn't go through the court system. So when you think about that, uh, I want you to think, use that to answer the question about consequences. So if, if at the end of this process, we have two candidates, and most likely the way it's looking at, at this point, none of them will be from the Southeast. What do you think will be the consequences? Uh, I'm, I'm going to only speak for myself um, because I'm not really certain I understand how the Nigerian psyche works because I think Nigerians generally, have gone through um, a pro maybe a process of Stockholm syndrome. Yeah. And 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 generally Nigerians are that they have a warped way of thinking. Um, I'm being honest because as you know, um I mean our uh, university forum which um, I talk all the time and I wonder why uh, you know, I wonder how uh, you know a society can make progress with the way we think. Because for me, if there's a problem, I'll look at the foundation of that problem. So, for example, if I'm not one of those who would come and start screaming when you see a dysfunctional child, and you start screaming, oh, why is this child dysfunctional? I would like to know who are the parents? What's the disposition of the parents? the mom, the dad, that's how to solve a problem. So for me, um, I, 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 I basically feel, and I'm not answering the question, but I basically feel that Nigeria has a, 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 a clash of civilization, a big problem of a clash of civilization. So th those people who speak about uh, coming together, working together, um, need their heads tested as far as i'm concerned so um and if you're if, if if you're going to be alive in 30 years you will understand by the time nigerian population gets to 400 million you will understand what 
the scramble for resources actually means. Okay? Because for me, Buha people think Buhari is a failure. For me, Buhari is a blessing. A deep blessing for Nigerians. It basically has should teach Nigerians a few lessons. For me, that's how I see. Uh, what, what, what lesson? What lessons uh, is Buhari that teaching? Nigeria Nigeria? Doesn't work. That no, wait, wait. Let, let me hear from Brian. Let me make sure that I understand him because there are people well, who are watching. They don't understand. What well, first place, I, I I feel that I feel that uh, the we, we simply don't understand that the Nigerian president presidency is probably the strongest, the the most powerful in the whole world. So we don't understand structures. We don't understand processes. So and that's what has opened up everything. Buari has exposed Nigeria for what it is, that it, the system does not work. So, for example, you can go and do something to, to the Supreme Court, the, the person who is the head of the Supreme Court. You can do anything to, you can send people to, you can the house of a Supreme Court judge. You can sack this person. You can do, you can actually have a meeting. You can have, what's that council called here? Uh, security uh, National Executive Council. No, uh, National uh, Council of States. And pardon you, anybody. You can have that, right? And not have one person, right? That comes from an, a region that accounts for, let's say, 30 million people. And that's the flaw. So for me, a Nigeria on its own is a, it's flawed. Because if you look at even just the educational system, right? where when we're growing up i'm sure everyone here knows knows what i'm talking about you would have you do your jam you have a very good score that ordinarily should get you in there but no they will bring in state of origin or your state has a different cutoff mark from a different how does that improve the, how does that bring us together how does that make us progressive people how does that enable merit so uh, i'm sorry okay. okay thank you thank you thank you brian thank you i i got your drift i know i know where you're going and before i continue along the line let me uh, uh paul paul left us and and uh, there's a lady here you want to speak to us you want to join us hello okay okay mrs I'm paul Mrs. Paul are you interested in talking to us because Ms. Paul. we only have mail mail yeah, now so we'll give the president said that we should we should get women involved. I'm trying to get your wife involved. I, I hope. No, come on, you can't say that. Are they talking about yeah. oh. yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. We are talking to you. Yeah. What language do you want us to speak? We want to hear you. No. All these guys they've been Dr. talking. Dr. Yeah. I went to the other room. So I can't give her the <laughs> What is her viewpoint? What is her take on what's going on about your Southeast politics? Ah, I don't know anything about politics. Okay. Who is the right person? What, what's her name? What's her name? Her name is Amaka. Amaka, aha. Amaka, who is the right person to for them to vote for? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I think I prefer uh, Pitobi. Pitobi. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, we have someone here who prefers uh, Shegumi. What do you think about Shegumi? I don't know about Shegumi. The only person I know is Pitobi <laughs> and um, Tinubu, but I don't like, I don't want Tinubu. Oh, you don't want Tinubu? Good. No. I, I see we're making progress. We know what women are looking for. Um, all right. Thank you so much, Amaka, for joining us. Um, okay, Alexi. Alexi, let me let me get you. We're rounding up. Um, let me get your 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 take on um and the, what what do you think will happen? Uh, you know, and uh, the implication because I think I think people are laughing. This is very important uh, period in in Nigerian history. Somebody was telling me yesterday that what may happen is that we may have a civil war down the road, and the United Nations will now come in and and do these things we couldn't do for ourselves. And if you look at what's going on now, we are, we are actually at a point where anything can trigger something big, you know. But, Alexi, what's your take on what could happen? Let us decide how we should live, either together 
or as individual nations. Nothing will, heavens will not fall when we do that. It happened elsewhere. The, the Europe you see today once had a common ground of nationhood which did not work. And they had to divide up to a country as small as uh, uh, Liechtenstein. Luxembourg, Luxembourg, uh, right? They, they're, well, what are we afraid of in splitting? We, let's decide how we will do it so that there will be harmonious existence after that. If anybody is afraid of what will come tomorrow, I don't know what that will be, except that that person is not willing to work hard. Let us sit down on a round table and look at every little thing that need to be done so that people will still be ab uh, able to, to live like human beings. Because we are not living like human beings today in Nigeria. There's no security and there's no, in fact, we do not have trust in ourselves. And there's nothing you can do to change that. So let Nigerians decide to do a referendum as to how we should go. And it shouldn't be anything punitive for any group. Let's just decide what we want. And I can tell you one thing. There are more people who are quiet who want it that way than there are people who are talking. We are all trying to be politically correct. That's the thing. But if we really say our minds, there are more people who are sick and tired of the situation that we find ourselves. I, I like the word, uh, the Stockholm Syndrome that our brother talked about. Mm. That is where we are. We are in a kind of syndrome similar to that. It's time to jettison that situation and face realities. Let right. us do something about our structure with a referendum as one nation. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, Okija and Okija. What's what's your roundup? Uh, your take? Um, to be honest with you, um, I mean, you know, the, uh, like I said, I supported, um, like, uh, in, you know, with uh, working with the constitution we have right now and keep making changes. Uh, there's no country, you know, has a perfect constitution. Uh, every, everything's work in progress. But the, the issue, the problem is that Nigeria is not making progress. You know, it's just like you know, maybe take one step, you know, one step forward, and take like ten steps backward. So I think uh, somehow um, I'll be so happy to see PDP produce a northern candidate and APC produce a northern candidate because I mean there's so much the friction it will cause in the polity. I mean you know I, I I don't know. Some people are saying oh not in Nigeria nothing will happen, but I think you know like eight years of Buhari and then again not eight years of people expecting eight years of another northern. It's gonna drive a lot of people crazy and they're gonna go crazy on the street or on the streets here. Yeah. I let it know. I, I'm happy, you know. Let them come up with that, you know, so that uh, maybe it will be an up an upheaval of some sort that we, you know, you know, you know, uh, help us take a giant stride, you know, forward. You know, probably, you know, like uh, our uh, brother Brian has been saying, you know, you have uh, a perfect, uh, you know, whatever, you know, whatever a, 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 a consultation, a conference whereby people from all every ethnic group. You know, we come and they, you know, you know, speak their mind that this is what we want. You know, because we, what we're talking about, or what are we talking about? You know, not when you talk about not. You know, the, what's the name of that man that was, you know, talking some uh, nonsense? Um, is the secretary of the IRF? Uh, yeah, how many? I mean, they wouldn't really talk about not. They think that they, they, they not. not there are so many groups in the not. They are so it's not about how that's or the full and it's so if the south will be able if they have you know conference, I believe that most. Mm -hmm. People from the um, mid middle belt, they would, they will, you know, have a, they would align with the south to have a, you know, some form of independence. Not, I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm not talking about. Uh, I mean, what I'm talking about, you know, like a uh, independence thought of, you know, like uh, where do we, where, where are we going? What we want to achieve instead of having a, a country whereby you have a secular state, then you have a um, uh, uh, religion ruling the, the secular state. You know, everything is done in the name of, you know, uh, kind of with religious sentiment in mind. So we have to do it. Like, yeah. So um, I'll be so happy for us to have, uh, you know, PDP produce Northern candidate APC. Yeah. Yeah. So let, let it happen. Okay. 
secular country with 12, 12 states that have declared Sharia states, yeah. which basically yeah. pitches the constitution. Man, you yeah. Have, yeah. All right, all right. I, I will, I'll go around one more time. Uh, but Solomon, what is your uh, roundup? Your 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 take. I want to come round again for what's keeping you up at night, Brian. I will start with you. But Solomon, go ahead. Me, I still see everything to be the same because from the way it's going, the Northern will produce their president, and if they did not, they will go for some of their realists from the southwest and make him a president. And Nigeria will still remain the way it is. So nothing will change. It does not matter whatever we talk and whatever we say. But only thing that can like make an impact and change is actions. But if people talk and talk and talk and sit down, nothing will work. Because the major problem, just like what I said before, is the foundation and the constitution. All right. And if something is not being done about it, there is nothing. Because by the time you become a president, and you have cabans that you need to pay royalties. You have to put them. You have to settle them. Nigeria still remains where it is until all these things are being tackled and removed before we can make progress. So with that, with those those things, I'm going on nothing. So another not time become the president or southwest, they will put somebody there. So the south south will still remain, no matter what they are doing. All this is they are just doing is gra gra. At the end, we'll still go back and shout and shout. We won't be afraid. We want um, what they call it, um, Ariwa or Yoruba Nation. My dear, nothing will happen. After everything, they will just settle everything within their top uh, politicians, and every case will close. That is Nigeria for you. So, nothing right. will Thank you so much. Brian, what's keeping you up at night? You look like you are stressed about Nigeria, and what's keeping okay. you up at night? One thing. Okay. Um, the, 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 the problem I have is that Nigerians. Uh, are not looking at the indices, okay? So if you look at our human development index, right, for Nigeria, right, you have, you can already see a schism, right, for the north and the south, our human development index. The, 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 the segment of the country, right, with a more, with a, 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 a poorer, uh, human development index is producing and uh, 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 having more kids at a, an alarming ratio, right? And <laughs> and <laughs> and like I said earlier, right? There is going to be a scramble for resources, and it started already. So um, it's a pity. I don't know whether anybody here is from Southern Kaduna. In 1988, I worked in uh, in Kaduna, the old Kaduna state. There is a place there called the Laduga uh, 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 Cattle Reserve, right? At that time, I think it might have been maybe about 30,000 hectares. Now, that place is 88,000 hectares. And they are, they are doing, they are bringing in Fulanis from the Sahel wow. into that place. If you think it's a joke, Google Saku, Sakopu, which is like Sakopu is like um, the equivalent of Afaniferi and uh, uh, Ohaneze for Southern Kaduna. And they don't, the indigenous people there are being kicked out. Go and check out how many IDP counts are in the middle belt. In fact, um, in I think in November, we had a meeting with Benue State, uh, the governor's um, advisor. The figure given to us as of number of people in IDP in Benue, is 1.8 million. So what I'm saying to Southerners is that if you think that what is happening in the Middle Belt will not happen to you, for me, I think you need to all go back to school and go and read history. So all these people talking about uh, uh, unity and stuff like that, you guys need to read a bit more history lessons. These guys are very patient. Very patient people. They, they can wait for a hundred years. So what, I, what I'm saying is that if you look at the history, what is happening in Benue, what is happening in Plato, what is happening, in fact, as we speak, 
those of you uh, who are Yorubas, uh, where's where's uh, Bolaji? If you are from Ogun State, go and ask what has happened to the people of Yewa. They have moved to Benin Republic, and we are here talking about how uh, the nation will move. This nation is not moving forward. In fact, it's going it's going to retrogress further. So my problem is what keeps me uh, uh, awake is the fact that Nigerians are not a thinking people. We don't, Southerners most especially, are not a thinking people. We don't project, we don't see. It's like, it's like, it's like, it's like you have a dysfunction, you have, uh, you have your next door neighbor, right? His dysfunction, his wife is dysfunctional. And you are, and you, you don't, and you are still thinking whether the 20 children that, that is going to come from the offsprings are not going to be dysfunctional. That's my problem. That that with all these indices, with all these indices, we still cannot see that we are heading for doom. We are heading for anyway. That's what I, I, that's all I can say because there's just so many indices. So thank many. You. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um. Uh. Obie, thirty seconds. What's keeping you up at night? I'm picking offense with uh, Levin, Levin Nati on the chat. I know, uh, I know, I see what's going on. How there. dare he say some? He say that some politicians are promising to take Nigeria to NATO. That's, <laughs> that's not acceptable. <laughs> it, may, it might be. <laughs> anyway, what's when keeping you up at night? <laughs> on, the comment, on, the, on the comments, on the comments, there are, there are several interesting things people are saying on the comments. We are watching them. We are was, picking yeah, some of them up. Yeah. But anyway, go ahead. What keeps me up at night is the fact that we Nigerians all over the world recognize the fact that there is change. We see the change, but instead, majority of us decide to put decide to pray, saying our prayer will cover. I have never seen anywhere that prayer prayer works. Never, mm. ne I never see. So the fact that we don't care, even though we they see the problem and then we know the solution. I mean, we are smarter than that. We know the solution. We know how. We, matter of fact, we know how we did one. But instead of now, someone the courage and go for it. Mbano, we, we can fast for forty days and forty nights. Rather than move to fight this problem, so that's what's the problem now. We don't care. We want to go every rather than to achieve the every lead, the heavy, the every year first. I enjoy and small. We will see if uh, that every that they tell us it will make sense. For me, no, see, I'm not interested in every, but I know it will be very boring. But yes, we can achieve it here. We <laughs> will try to achieve every boy now. One pray, so that keeps up at night. Prayer, prayer, prayer. Majority of us, this instead of. That's staying up at night. They deserve strategy. We will pray. So I don't know. I joined them to pray at night instead of sleeping. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. What's keeping you up at night? Paul, you have to unmute yourself. I know you've been talking to several women and you, you muted yourself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So let me let me take it two from uh, Brian and then follow up with um, Ovie. What keeps me up at night? Let's go back to history, like Brian said. You know, I, I was privileged. I was raised um, in Lagos. And my dad worked in the uh, Nigerian Post Authority. So we lived in their papa houses. So back then, what they call a papa, they don't call it a papa. They call it European quarter. You see a lot of white people there. But during the time when Awolo war, during after the independence, Awolo was systematically tried to chase away these white people uh, due to some of the horrible things that it did to us. So good percentage of these white people from Apapa, from Victoria Island, from GRA, Keja, they all left. And many of them, they didn't left like going back to Europe. They left, they moved back to Jobs. That's how Gowon took all these people. And one thing they advised Gowon, they make Gowon understand. They said the Southwest have better international relationship in terms of education. So if you give these people power, you will never take it back from them. So the North are doing everything within their reach to sustain and keep power to themselves. And that is everything they've been doing from back then to now. 
Then I also want to talk about what will be talk, what keeps me up at night. This religious thing is killing me. This we want to pray our way over. It is killing me because we we'll keep praying and praying and praying. You know, there are so many bushes. Let me upgrade it from bush to forest. In my village, in your village, that we call evil forest, nobody has ever gone in. My great grandfather, my grandfather, my father. But a young white boy will come in and enter that bush. They will say, ah, white man gets more Jitu passers. White man is stronger than us. Because we even accept defeat before we even think to start to fight. This is our problem. You understand? We choose not to do anything to formulate the problem. My younger brother is living in a place in Badagri today. You know, he, keep, he, he called me, he said he's having a problem with snakes. I said, bros, you live close to the bush. You understand? Go online, go find out the things that you need to do. There are some chemicals that I recommended for him. He put all those chemicals and everything. Those snakes don't come around again. You understand? But every day the wife keeps praying, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus. And it doesn't make anything happen. This is our problem. It's our problem. And, and um, All right. these are the things that keep me up at night. All right, Paul. So Paul and, and Obie, I, I need to inform you just in case you don't know. You can actually, for 310,000 Naira, get a straight ticket to heaven. You know, you don't have to deal with all these things we are dealing with here. Uh, but before, before we reach uh, Kaduna or Ikiti, they'll kidnap me now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> at, at this point, I believe more in uh, uh, Elon Musk than Jesus Christ. At this point, Elon Musk will take me closer to heaven. Right? <laughs> No, it's almost too expensive, Jeff Bezos. 300,000, you get there. <laughs> um, you, are sure that, you are sure that if I have testimonies, people are going to come back. For the end, I have you know, right. 10 minutes. <laughs> All right, uh, can I, what's keeping you up at night? Um, before I say that, um, uh, I think Brian, uh, you know, the, 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 the points he made about... Uh, you know the Fulani is invading uh, the Middle Belt, uh, Ogun State, and some states. I don't know. I don't know if that's one of the strategies they have for this election. You know, uh, the North House for this election. Uh, but anyway, uh, what's keeping me up at night? Uh, Rudolph, you know, like uh, you know, we, when we, we started this battle, this internet battle, Nigerian battle. I think in the, in the late 1990s, uh, in 1998, 1997, 98. And I fought it, we fought it for like so many years, and I got tired. And I, because you know, nothing changed. You know, Nigeria, you know, get to you know, getting worse. And uh, it's because of it that I, that I, you know, I come, I come here, you know, to discuss Nigeria. So what is keeping me up at night is that you know, Bitcoin is not going up, you know, the way I want it because I want to retire so that I don't hear, you know, go somewhere where I don't hear about Nigeria anymore. You know, so that's what keeping me up, up at the price of Bitcoin. <laughs> All right, thank you, <laughs> Alexi. What's keeping you up at night? Well, um, I, I love my people. Right from my village to my town, to my ethnic group, and to others that I grew up with, I have friends that I still have all over Nigeria. I even have relatives <laughs> that are from the north because their mother comes from Sokoto. So if I have such cousins, the tendency is for wanting a kind of unity. But my people, this dangerous unity we keep talking about is killing many. And you, you won't say because your wife is from America, then Nigeria and America should become one. Because that's what some of Nigerians are, are trying to sell. That, oh, we are intermarried. We will still survive. In fact, we will have two places we can go to to have fun if we are in that way connected. Let Nigeria go into its natural unit of nationhood. The urban nation, if they are going to come up, I'll be glad to go there and dance oh, I'm people with them. If the Biafrans will get what they're asking for, if everybody will enjoy it, but there's they just this Stockholm syndrome in everyone who thinks that if things change, they are not going to get what they are getting now. Let us give that a chance. Let there be freedom. Let us feel like human beings who are free for the first time and then take care of ourselves according to the gifts that we have been given naturally. 
That's what keeps me awake. I want to be able to go to Nigeria, go home to my village and sleep soundly and not think of what's happening in my forest next to me or who is coming to uh, force me to move from my village to another place because they want my place. I want to feel safe. That's what's keeping me up, up at night. All right. I, I want to thank everybody. We've been over by 15 minutes. I want to thank everybody that joined us today. I want to thank Ovie, as usual, Paul, uh, Alexi. This is the first time you're joining us. Ekene, you're always here. Uh, Brian, I really appreciate you coming in today. Uh, Obina joined us and so many others who are not in the studio at this point. I want to thank all of you. I appreciate your time. I know that we don't get paid for this, but um, it's our passion for uh, what's going on in that country that is keeping us um, talking. And it's good that we talk and share knowledge. And a lot of things that have been said here over the, over the last few weeks have turned out to be um, very influential. So I appreciate this. And all the people who are sending in their comments, I appreciate all of you. Now, tomorrow we have a special interview on 90 Minutes Africa with Omoyo Leshore. I will recommend that uh, if you have time, you can join us at uh, 4.30 p.m. Nigerian time and 11.30 uh, a.m. New York time. Join us. You can also have an opportunity to question him. So uh, on behalf of everybody behind the scene here who helped make this possible, I thank you all for joining. Thank you, Obie. Thank you, uh, Paul. Thank you, uh, Brian. Thank you, Ekene, everybody. Thank you so much. And we'll do this again on Wednesday. We do um, the one we have about people living outside, the, outside Africa, uh, Africans abroad. And on Saturday, we talk about politics in Nigeria and across Africa. So uh, thank you, like I said, and uh, I will see you next time. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>